Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. I'm gonna toss together a terrarium. Uh, normally in the videos, I have things like done up with the lighting and everything, but there's a lot of reflection here, so kind of keeping it to a minimum today. Over the last couple weeks, I've been doing this thing like Fern Friday. I've only done a few of them, but I have lots of fern videos. And I had mentioned when doing the video on the maidenhair fern, which is this fern that's over here in the background, I wanted to go ahead and pop that into a terrarium. I might have gotten this at Target. It's been a minute, I don't remember. Either way, it is very large. It does look kind of like a jug, and I do think it's going to work really well for the maidenhair fern. All right, so for starters, I have this hydrostone here that's going to make the base layer. Oh, and pardon my spatula. I thought I might need that to help dig around a little bit. So I want to put down a fairly decent layer of this hydrostone on the bottom. I was initially thinking I was going to need more, but I think that's plenty that's actually probably perfect oh this is the false bottom kind of gave it a little bit of a shake there hoping to flatten it out even it out a little bit and now i have some window screening here this is kind of a plastic material it's not metal screening it's pretty cheap just grabbed it from lowe's over like where the windows and doors are it's like 12 dollars for a really big roll of this stuff and this is actually kind of a nifty material to have around if you do a lot of planting if you drill a lot of holes in your own pot it's like bonsai and whatnot where you have large holes or maybe you use a, a pot media that the soil moves through very very quickly like a very gravelly mixture just because you can put it on those holes and it helps to keep gravel and soil and everything from washing out right now I'm just cutting it so it's about the same size as the bottom of this vase and it can be just a smidge larger that's actually better for it to be a little bit larger I have one of those nice craft cutting boards that could be useful with something like this you can use an exacto knife and just trace around it and the entire point of this screening is to create a false bottom or really the hydrostone down here is the false bottom screening is just to help keep soil from getting down into that false bottom down here on the bottom where that hydrostone is the false bottom that is where all of the water is going to collect when i water the fern you don't want a lot of organic matter in there it can get kind of funky organic matter meaning the soil i did go ahead and trim just a little bit more off of there so that there wasn't too much of an overlap that's because in this next step i'm going to be using this charcoal here horticultural charcoal or you can use like activated carbon that you would put in a fish tank I have rinsed this in a colander under the sink just let the water run through it until it came out clear and there we go so the whole point of having that charcoal in there is so that when the water goes through the potting soil then down to this false bottom it'll sort of help to keep that water a little bit more clean the charcoal or really the carbon it has little pores in it almost like little channels and when water or even air but when in this situation when water moves through those pores or those channels it collects impurities not everything but some of it it doesn't last forever it's one of those things where the water actually needs to be moving through it for it to be effective so i could have put it in the very bottom but without the water moving through it it's not really going to do much it'll help but it's not really going to do much and eventually those pores those channels fill up with everything that they've collected and they're not really good anymore but since with like any type of planting i do i like to repot every probably year and a half to two years i'm not too worried about that in an aquarium carbon is only good for roughly 30 days that's like an extreme estimate because it depends on how much it's removing from the water in this situation water is only going to be moving through it when it gets watered and since this is a terrarium that won't be too terribly often so i would think it should last a fairly long time this layer also creates a nice little micro habitat for lots of little critters beneficial things beneficial bacteria mycorrhiza and things that are good for the root and the overall habitat the kind of culture you could say of the terrarium as far as the soil is concerned i actually went ahead and just bought a pre-made soil for terrariums it's a peaty soil has some rice holes in it some sand i may end up adding a a little bit more sand to this i'm not really sure i am going to go ahead and pour it up enough to make probably a good two to three inch layer in there at least also a quick note it is usually hopefully i already had a pop-up that said this but normally when i do a terrarium it's been a minute but i like to moisten the soil before i put it in i forgot to do that this time the reason for that is that the amount of water it normally takes to get the soil wet is usually more than is going to fit down here in the reservoir and it's nice to be able to pour the water around the edges when filling this up for the first time when putting the plants in to help wash the soil off the sides again it's just it, it's, it's it, whoops that's all right what's done is done i'm just going to unpot my maidenhair fern check out its roots make sure things aren't like nasty and moldy or gross down in there looks pretty okay to me i am going to try and get a decent amount of the soil off of here but i really don't want to damage the roots a chopstick can be really useful for doing things like these for teasing out fine roots i don't i don't have a chopstick out here with me but i have a little ballpoint pen that's all dried up so i'm just going to go through 
kind of feather out the roots, loosen up that soil. There we go, that'll do. Maidenhair ferns really don't like the roots being messed with very much. Most ferns really don't like the roots messed with very much. So I'm not taking too much off of there. Now I'm gonna go ahead, use my little wooden spoon here, spatula doohickey, and just dig out a hole to drop the fern into. Now I'm actually also thinking this cryptanthus, that might look really nice in there too. I really like the pink and the variegation on this. I think it'll kind of lighten things up in there a little bit. I'm gonna use this. I think that looks really nice in there. I have this jar of stones here. I'm gonna top dress the soil with this. I've left the stones so they're kind of on the outer perimeter because I have some moss I want to drop in this also. This is just some moss I actually grabbed out of my garden. It's been soaked and rinsed and then I put it back in here. The only reason you soak it or I like to soak it is to help make sure you're kind of getting some of the gunk out of it so it's not quite as dirty when you're putting it into the terrarium. I also have this jar full of terrarium filler. It's just got like some lichen, some twigs, some dried mushroom type things and I actually decided I don't want to use this for this setup. I'd rather have more hardscaping material in here which I don't have right now but over time I'll find like different rocks and twigs and little pine cones and things and I'll put those in there. Man that reflection. Right now the very last step of course is to go ahead and water this in. As I'm watering this in I'm trying to hit the sides but it's a little bit difficult since this is has that funny shape to the top. And that's it. Simple. Really not much to it. I will say this fern much larger than I thought. Ideally I would have a smaller maiden hair fern in here. That that's the one thing I would change. I, I told you I was gonna do a maiden hair fern terrarium, and that's 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 the one I had. I felt like this was a lot larger. I could fit like my entire forearm in here. Hey, but luckily they're slow growers, right? I'm gonna have this in a window that faces kind of southeast. It gets some morning light, and I'm hoping that the amount of light it gets will kind of bring its growth down a little bit. It'll be a little bit more short. As it is right now, it hasn't been getting a ton of light, so it has been putting its growth up really, really high. But there are some varieties of maidenhair ferns that are just really, really tall. So if I can find a different variety that's shorter, I will swap that out. That false bottom is doing exactly what it's supposed to. See, it's got the water in there, it's collecting, it's not in contact with the soil. That worked out just perfect. Don't want the soil in contact with the water line because then it'll just wick it up and it'll cause all kinds of problems. To have waterlogged, stinky, gross soil. The opening up here is what kind of complicated things a little bit. The top of this being smaller than the rest of the bottle, or the vase I should say, that made it so anything that's tall in here isn't really gonna fit up here. But I wanted something tall that's in this because I had been planning on or hoping to use the cryptanthus in here. I'm really glad I did. I think that that looks beautiful in this. The maiden hair fern is going to take some adjusting. One thing though that I do really, really like about this container is that the size of the top on this is going to be easy to cover up. I have this cork that was on that jar with the vase filler or the terrarium filler. That fits on there wonderfully. Not super crazy about how it looks. It's not airtight, which I'm actually okay with. It wasn't really going for an enclosed terrarium here. Those can get kind of complicated. I could also use like those decorative balls. People put in bowls that, like, around their house, like on their end tables and things like that. One of those would fit nicely up there. But uh, for now, yeah, that cork's fine. I don't hate how it looks. Main thing I'm going to be watching out for is make sure that this doesn't have condensation on the sides of it throughout the majority of the day. Really like morning and night, that's when the condensation should be there. But if it's like mid-afternoon, that means there's too much water in here. In which case, I'll just go ahead and pop that off. Taking that top off of there will allow the water to get out to evaporate and for things to dry out more appropriately. There are some dry up leaves in there. I went ahead and left them. Decaying matter will provide some food for the springtails and all their little critters that are in there, the isopods and whatnot. I doubt I'll be able to find them on camera, especially since I just watered in here, but I had already, just from putting the soil in this, seen some springtails hopping around. Like I said, this is not an enclosed terrarium. I'm not too hung up on the biological fauna that's in here. And this, it's not airtight. What I'm saying is this isn't necessarily like a bioactive terrarium, though it kind of is. Because I am going to make sure to try and use dechlorinated water with this. I'm not going to be using my pond water that's like in the background back there. That's what I use for all my other plants. That water is a little bit funky. It can just cause some issues like mold and stuff. I don't want to have to deal with it. And I will say probably just for its first day, I'm going to go ahead and take the top off of there just to kind of let it dry out a little bit. I want everything in here to stay moist, but it doesn't need to be saturated. Right now, it's a little bit saturated. But I can see the water line down here in the false bottom, so at least I'm assured that the water's not wicking back up into here. So that's good. Like I said, I'm going to put this in a bright location away from cold drafts, away from hot drafts. Essentially just saying I want the temperature to stay fairly steady 
on the inside. Normal household temperatures, anywhere from 68 to 74, that's about where my house is at. We will get some morning light, but not direct light. It'll be filtered through the leaves of the trees. This would be a good thing to have somewhere where you have some sheer curtains. Because this being a glass container, it's going to magnify the light. Could cook things. And the plants that are in here are a little bit more delicate to that. The cryptanthus, not necessarily so much, but the maiden's hair fern, uh, not very forgiving. Another really great option for fern to put in here would have been a lemon button fern. I'm gonna hold off, see how the maiden hair does. If it looks like it's not doing great, then I'll swap it out with the lemon button fern. And I'll try to find something larger. <laughs> for the maiden hair, because really don't want the leaves pressed up against the sides like this. I'm hopeful that maybe those leaves will stand up and that's why I'm not really too worried about it. But if they remain pressed against the glass like this, that can be problematic. Moisture is going to get locked in there, air can't flow around the leaves, it'll just kind of rot off. It won't be good. It's going to have to keep an eye on things, see how it does. That's going to do it. What are some fun things y'all been doing with your terrariums? Comment down below. Or you can follow me on my social media, I'll follow you back. We can talk on there. I like that because we can exchange pictures, that's a lot of fun. I use Instagram far more than anything else. And I will be sure to post updates with this, like in the weekend vlog. In the weekends, I release a vlog of just like the little things that have been going on throughout the week. So I'll be sure to do an update with that. So if you don't mind liking the video, I'd appreciate it. It helps the channel a lot. It makes a really big difference. So thank you. And uh, subscribe as well. I do upload multiple times a week. Hit that notification bell. That way you can stay updated with things like, well, when I do updates on the plants. Look at all of that reflection. Can you see me? I can't tell. I won't know until I'm editing this. Is this just camera? Can you see everything? Oh, I hope not. That's going to be so terrible. I zoomed in and I this, this is becoming a little bit too mesmerizing. I just got way too distracted by having something shiny in front of me. Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a fantastic day, fantastic life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.